It was a 3k. Always a good, always a good turnout here at Borgata for WPTs. I'll have to make it out there one of these days. It's one of the places I haven't played yet. Kirk with Queens. Getting a nice hand, three-handed. He's on a bit of a slide here, but Queens is a good way to stop that. Now, Zach going to make the call with King-3 suited. I think that's actually a pretty reasonable call. And Justin, of course, going to call it ace five in the big one. Eric's got to fade the over cards, and he does, but Zach picks up a flush draw. This could be interesting. Now we'll see how aggressively Zach wants to play this hand here. Well, versus a, a bet of this size, I, I really don't hate a check raise here. It's such a small bet from Same. Eric again. It's like he's just going to call. Again, also He doesn't fine. have to worry about Justin in the big line waking up with an eight behind him when he check raises, but that's just not going to happen that often. Now, Justin might actually try to get creative here. He does have the most eights by far, but he's up against two pretty strong hands. Wow, he is carving out raising chips. Oh, and he does let it go. <laughs> a lot better of it. Faked us out. So nine on the turn doesn't really change anything. Eric's still ahead with the queens. Eric out 600,000. Another small bet. Just really pricing in Zach with a hand just like the, like he has here. Yeah, Zach definitely can't fold for this price. He's going to make the call. And now this is a sort of spot where Zach could lead certain rivers as a bluff. Well, there's the yeah, jack of hearts, hearts on the river, and that's exactly what Zach was looking for here. He's not going to lead it, though, and I can't imagine Eric bets. Eric immediately checks, and yep. Does check. <laughs> Show his king high flush. Wiping Eric. the tears away after that one. Not happy at all. Yeah, he's, he's on a rough little stretch here. He's uh, getting kind of beat up, but that happens. You know, you just lose a couple pots in a row, and suddenly things start to look pretty dire. Eric tables pocket queens. Shows the pocket queens. He keeps showing these hands, I think, you know, to say, hey, look how unlucky I'm getting. Uh, but again, that sizing yeah, in that, that hand, he really just priced in in Zach along the whole way. Right. Yep. I mean, what do, you, what, do you think, what do you think uh, Zach does on the turn against, say, a 75 to 80% pop? Down? I think he's a much tougher time calling. He's got a, a, a yeah, relatively agree. rough draw on a paired board. Yeah, but the problem for him is if he bets that big with Queens, it, Zach does actually have a good number of like strong value hands on that turn. If he's flatting pre with king three suited, he can have all the eight X in his range, like all the suited eight X. He can have five six. He can have jack ten. Um, you know, so it's it's not like Queens is that strong on the turn that you necessarily want to be betting huge with it. But I, I do think he should have bet bigger than what he did. Zach raises makes it four hundred fifty thousand. Justin folds the small blind action over to Eric. Wow, Eric just wow. folds the ace three. It could be because the players are now going on break and Eric just wanted to go to break. Well, and he's been losing some pots. We're going, yeah. They're going on break. It's just let's take the break, come back, reset afterwards. I don't wow. hate the mindset. You feel like you're, you know, going on tilt a little bit. Tight fold by Eric, and we are at a break, and play will resume in 15 minutes. We'll be right back here at Borgata. Uh, against a min raise here, I would just be flatting. Um, but Steven does go all in. He'll get the bad news, and 
He has about 1% equity in the pot. Running 10s or running aces. Or I guess he is a running straight flush. Four yeah. five of hearts. Table. That's not going to do six, it. Very unfortunate for Steven, because if Eric had a 10, then he would still be fairly live. He'd have at least like 25% or whatever, but against the main full house, he is close to dead on the flop. Uh, they're going to count the, the chips because they're pretty close in in stack here, but I, I believe that Steven's going to be our sixth place finisher. That Eric does have him covered by a few. Uh, that's a brutal way to go out after being chip leader for uh, you know most of the down the stretch, but like you said, things can change very quickly in poker tournaments. Joe saying that he covers. I tend to believe Joe here. That's a really good card. That is a good card, isn't it? First card I saw. It's a good one. Well, you know you got a good shot. You're in the hand. That third one is probably in there, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Steven Sung. He will be our sixth place finisher. Steven Sung is our sixth place finisher here today, and he goes home with $138,254 for So Zach's range is obviously going to be wider for flatting than some other players. Um, it becomes a pretty good spot to squeeze. I played with Zach on day three and day four, and what I noticed is that he flatted a lot of opens. And... Uh, when the pot was squeezed, he he rarely continued. So yeah. he's, he flatted a lot of open, not just with a big stack, but at all stack depths, he kind of likes to play post-flop and, and play in position. Both players swapping flush draws. This one could get interesting. Zach, I have to do with the straight flush draw. Zach Zach definitely in a trouble spot here, but he does still have a decent number of live outs. And of course, the nine of clubs would be his uh, his wish card here. That's going to pick up a few more outs there on the bottom end of the straight draw. He does opt to just see the river. Interesting check. I think I would have fired the turn oh there, and it is goodness. the nine of clubs on the wow. river. Oh, A is. straight Are flush you for kidding? Zach. Yeah, Michael might be out of the tournament on this hand. Quite different. Zach's like, high flush. do I really have a straight flush? You do, Zach. Hey, sometimes it's just your tournament, and I mean, you, you said earlier, Zach getting the runner, runner, full house with the ace queen. Now he has a straight flush. Real tough spot for Michael. This is I'm not sure what he can do other than just call. He's going to think it over. You got to give him a little bit of credit here. This is a tough spot. Sure is. He does not have a lot of chips behind. He only has about, let's say, 1.7 million, 1.6 million. The tough spot for him is that he has he does a king high flush. He so many makes a flushes. call, and he'll get the bad news. And Michael Martyr <laughs> is our fifth place finisher here today after Zach Rivers, a straight flush. Michael played very well, and he'll go home with $181,329 for his efforts. Eric announces a four Wow. Wow, Look Eric. this. Going, going hard here. He's got a uh, so Eric percent of his stack. Yeah, he already. he can't he can't fold now, right? There's some debate if Eric's raise was large enough to be a legal raise. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah, they're the, he's they're forcing him to commit. Our our graphics are correct. Uh, they they it looks like he tried to make it 2.5, and he was told he had to make it 2.675. Now Joe in kind of a tough spot yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is tough. So he flats. Yeah, like I, I, I like around. that. He's probably suspicious of Eric uh, having it here. And he's got a lot invested. He's getting a very good price to see a flop. Something like five to one. And Eric gets there. This so the pot is really, six, really big 6 .1 million. Joe has about 4.6 behind. I can't imagine that Joe's going anywhere now. Uh, 
Not, probably not for 950. Assume he's gonna at least call this one with the backdoor spades as well. That's 950k. I I can't see Joe doing anything here. Wow. He quickly lets it go. Joe. What 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 do you guys think about that? I don't. I. I think that Joe is. You know, knew he was getting on because Joe's going to have another situation. Wow. Ooh. Joe goes all in here against Zach. He gets snap called, and Joe is uh, about a three to one dog here, all in with his ace jack against the suited ace king of Zach. Yeah, very standard spot here for Joe to rejam with the ace jack. Just unfortunate to run into it, especially with how weak Zach's ranges have been overall. It's very unfortunate to run into a strong hand like this. Here's a flop. Five, Not six, a good queen. flop good for Joe. No hot for good. Joe there. Loses one of his outs in the jack of clubs. Joe in rough shape here. He is going to need jack of spades or diamonds to stay alive. The river's a 10, and Joe McKeon has been eliminated in fourth place as Zach continues to add to his stack here at the final table. Rough spot for Joe there, but he played a hell of a game. He's got unlucky in a few big pots where he uh, got in with the nuts against the set. Joe McKeon takes home $240,251 as our fourth place finisher, and he, he played very, very well. Um, but then uh, these past couple of hands were tough. Justin has not really run a lot of big bluffs, and if we're if I'm Eric, it's just not an amazing situation. Well, that's an interesting card because Eric now picks up a, uh, a better straight draw. Yep. Yeah, both, both players basically with open ended. Eric technically has a double gut shot. Justin with an actual open ended. And I would expect Justin to continue to fire her on this turn. Yeah, once he's taken the check raise line, I think he probably will. But he might have to follow through on the river because both players are going to have a lot of draws here, and Eric does have position. 850, that's a pretty small bet. It is. Eric quickly calls. Big pot brewing here. River card river is, is a, a king. king. Justin. Great card for Justin. He picks up his straight. Eric with top pair now. Making his straight and... Let's see what he chooses to bet here. Yeah, he's got to pick the sizing right here because if, if he goes too big, he might lose his customer. But if he goes too small, he might miss out on some value. So, interesting spot. He's going big. 2.25 million. Yeah, and a lot of draw. We are back here at the Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. I'm Kane Callis alongside Mike Gagliano, and we're being joined by Brian Paris in Holland. We have three players left in this tournament. It started with 1,244 entries. We're down to the final three. All of these players are guaranteed $321,500 and change. And the first place prize is $636,928 plus a $15,000 tournament of champions buy-in. Eric starting things off. We're seeing Zach uh, check back a reasonably strong hand here. Nice flop for him, though. Gut shot and a flush draw. Yeah, against someone like Eric, especially who's been showing a propensity to kind of splash with a lot of different marginal holdings, I'd really like to see Zach just build these pots when he has 
you know, hands that have good equity, like nine eight suited. I guess the one argument against it is that Eric is sometimes going to do weird stuff like limpery raise you more often than most players would, and this hand really hates that. So maybe Zach is trying to play around that a little bit. Sure, I just don't think that that's going to be that big of a concern. And even if it is, like I don't know, we could see some flops. You know, I guess it's yeah. Not that I, I mean, deep I, I tend to agree with you. I don't think Eric's going to raise off of this stack size that often either. Yeah, and Zach got a nice bet out of him on the flop with basically nothing. Zach deciding to raise this flop in position will take it down. Zach you like the raise there from Zach? You prefer just a call. Uh, you know what? He's got a straight flush draw. I don't think there's a bad way to play that hand. Calling has its merits. Raising is fine. I, I prefer, I yeah, prefer with, raising. With that hand, anything you do is pretty much fine. I prefer raising to calling quite a bit there, especially uh, so short. Eric is now the short stack at this table. He has about 22 big blinds. Eric is the only player remaining who has won a WPT. He actually uh, won the biggest first prize in any WPT in history. It was for $1.08 million. Or perhaps the biggest in terms of field size. I think it was the biggest in terms biggest of, in field, terms of size, field size. Yeah. Things like the WPT 5 Diamond. Gets they, bigger, right? Yeah, they have a larger first place of around $2 million usually. Uh, if you, you'll also have noticed the blinds have gone up. We are now at a 125,000, 250,000 blinds. Still with a 25,000 ante. Justin Zaki. Average stacks are still quite deep. In second place currently. Zach Grunberg has about the same stack. He I came think into he this has final exactly table with the same stack. He started with 17.6 million, and that just said 17.6. Darcy and Justin limp the small blind with the 6-4. Eric with 7-5 in the big. Justin continuing we'll his limping strategy in the small blind. Eric pretty much locks up the hand here on the flop. And Justin has a gut shot. Actually, a double gut shot. There it is. Bad card for Eric because he makes two pair as well. Eric's not going to be happy about this one. No, this is a pretty unfortunate run out for him. Wow, he raises. Oh, boy. He raises to 850. I can't imagine. Well, I assume Justin will just call here. Yeah, I think he's just going to call. He's got the bad end of the straight. There's a flush out there. I don't see anything but a call here. It's actually kind of a sick spot for him. He has to wonder that he's beat a lot, but the price is just way too good to fold. Yeah, I would, I would not consider any option other than calling. He does not look happy about it. He will make the call. No, oh, that's a raising chips. That's a re-raise. He does re-raise here. Wow, that is an aggressive re-raise, but a good read by, by uh, Justin here. Very good read. Now, of course, what he's I would thinking not even is, consider is re raising with this one. Of course, what he's thinking is my opponent would have bet Jack nine on a previous street. He would have bet six nine on a previous street, and he likely would sure. have bet diamonds on a previous street. I think he's mostly correct. Nice raise by Justin. Yeah, but the other part of the equation is does he get called by worse, and it doesn't look like he necessarily does. Either way, a big pop for Justin. Eric does make a nice fold. Yeah, that was that was a very good uh, raise by by Justin there. Um, especially we've seen Eric uh, be particularly loose in some spots, and Justin may think that he's a little bit tilted right now, having uh, really uh, lost a lot of consecutive hands. He's now down to 17 big blinds. You can see a little bit of the frustration there. One of the toughest part of these live tournaments is, you know, maintaining a level head through all the ups and downs. Inevitably, you're going to have these low points. And after you had a lot of chips, it does feel really uh, dire to be in the position that Eric's in. But if he just wins a couple hands in a row, he's right back in it. Eric is in the small blind bracket. 
Yeah, Eric, very short here, so I suspect we'll see uh, Justin and Zach avoid playing big pots against one another until Eric's out, or makes a comeback. I think Zach looks a little bit like Noah Schwartz. I could see it. Sure. Yeah, I could see it. Eric with two cards. Two point four X. Like everyone just decided to stop using the sensors to send. Zach's going to make the call out of the small one. Justin with queen four. Nope. All right, well, this is exciting. We'll have a chance to analyze these hands and ranges without seeing the cards here. Ace, so King, three high Jack. cards. So this is a board that's generally going to favor the button's opening range rather than the small blind's flatting range. I think the button's going to have a better top end, but I would say that the small blind has, on average, a stronger flatting range than the button does an opening range here. Yeah, I agree with that. Check on the flop. Four was straight on the board and two flush draws. Zach checks again on the turn. Five hundred thousand dollars. There's a lot bet. of bluff candidates here, but he's sizing pretty small, which is interesting. Zach quickly folds. Eric takes it down. What do we think they had, gents? I mean, Eric. Well, we saw Zach at the small blind pretty wide before he had what king three suited, so he can definitely be flatting with a lot of like suited connectors, suited, yeah. like, lower hand. You'd expect for him to be flatting the small blind with. So I'm guessing he just missed. Eric could have easily had a, and, uh, you know any sort of queen type hand, queen jack, uh, you know king king queen something like that. Um, pocket queens even. Uh, he could have also easily just been bluffing with some sort of two low card hand. Uh, we've definitely seen Eric make plays like that. So I wouldn't put it past him. Tough to say. Yeah, certainly possible. Pretty, pretty wide range spot there in general, I would say, from, from Eric. Yeah, for, for both players, really. I mean, I'm Zach gonna, I'm has gonna been say, I'm gonna say Zach had something like the hand he has right now. Um, something suited like a 4-6 four, yeah. four, suited, something like that. Zach is open limping the three two suited. I can't I can't uh, endorse this one. Well now over to Eric in the big blind here who I think has a pretty good shove stack over this limp and overcall. Yeah, he's only got twenty big yeah, he blinds. He can also just raise call. I mean his hand is really strong. Right. It, I guess that depends on how many big blinds he has. He has twenty. It's about 20, yeah. I think around 20, so he could, he could have like a 4.5x range or something here that could potentially include some bluffs, but just shoving is fine. Well, he does or raise no, he, he 4x to 1 million. And he'll take it down. You know, the way Eric's been playing, it's reasonable to have some bluffs in that spot, too, so that's probably a better way for him to get value than shoving. All these guys guaranteed a very nice payday. Justin on the button, 6-3 of diamonds. He's been pretty tight on his button, but here he's opening it up. So we've seen him fold the... Yeah, because this is a pretty reasonable five. raise, I think. We've seen him fold the queen-5 offsuit. You'd, you'd rather be in there with a 6-3 suited than the queen-5 off, huh? I believe so, yeah. Big 
be aggressive with, but it's tougher now that he's got a shorter stack. I like those Eric time from chips. Montreal at his fifth WPT final table. Those time chips have a nice feel to him. They're going to take it down with Ace Queen. Timing for a walk, huh? Did he look? It looks like he looked. Oh, and he's going to show an Ace of Hearts, Queen of Spades. <laughs> All right. If you guys get a walk, do you look at your hand, providing you haven't looked already? I generally do not. How about but you, Brian? I I do. I love the sweats. I always look. When I'm when I'm deep in a tournament, uh, maybe I'd be more likely to. Here's my here's my theory. If I have a good hand, it's not gonna tilt me. But it might make my opponents like, you know, feel happy about their folds or something like that, if I show it. So I always like to show my good but hands. But what if you have a bad hand? Well, then I just don't show it. I just mug it. But what if you look and then they ask, "What did you have?" I said, "Ah, it was okay." <laughs> Min raise here out of the small blind from Eric. Zach has 10 jack offsuit. Imagine we'll be seeing a call. Yeah, easy call for Zach here. How shallow would Eric need to be for Zach to consider going all in here, or is there a stack size where that's preferable to calling? Uh, not with this hand. I think this category of hand in particular flops too well with position. Both making second pair. Eric with the better kicker. Both players will see a turn here. Eric also has a better back to club draw. So Zach actually cannot win the hand now. He cannot win the hand without bluffing. And it doesn't seem like he has a hand he's going to really want to bluff with. This is another small bet from Eric. What we've seen consistently from Eric is that when he has weak top pair or second pair type hands, he generally goes for very, very small bets. He doesn't do that. He hasn't yet done that with his bluffs. Um, so that would lead me to, if, if I were getting information at this final table to think that when Eric is, is betting small, he's disproportionately more likely to have value, and when he's betting large, it's nuts or nothing. He bets 375, gets a little bit more value. 375 again. Really just milking it the whole way. Yeah, I, I can't imagine Zach really folding anywhere. It's one of those spots where it's just like, uh, he probably has it, but the, the price is just so good. Exactly. Eric with a much needed pickup there, back to 30 big blinds. And with that pot, only 50,000 chips separate Justin and Zach. Zach has been the chip leader this entire final table. Will he slip? It would be something to see Zach go wire to wire. I'm not sure it's going to happen here with stacks the way they are, but that's quite the feat. Well, it's going to re require him to at least play the small blind, and he will be playing this hand. Epi's just going to limp. Perfectly reasonable. Justin with 10-2 suited. Not much for either player here. So 
So neither play with anything. This board is better for Justin's range. He's going to have more of these uh, low cards, the 5, 4, and 9, than Zach is. Yeah, and Justin we'll picks that up. He stabs. And not. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a new chip leader here at the final table. Yeah, Justin playing very uh, very patient this whole final table and finding good spots, and now he's a chip leader. Very nice display of you know, short stack patience by him. And he was never really short, but he was one of the shorter players for most of the final table, and then he's been on quite a tear recently. Three left out of 1,200. This is the highest stakes part of the tournament, and it's also the most mentally taxing with you having to play so many hands three-handed. I actually find it. I actually don't find it as taxing as the middle stages. I, I think more. It may be more stressful, but I, I think like overall for for me, it's just you're in so many more hands. The time goes so much faster. You're paying attention because the stakes are so high that I I feel like I could do this all day three-handed. Whereas some of the early and mid stages tend to drag for me, especially yeah, with, I can buy that. Especially okay, if so you play tight. Stressful is a good word. You know, in the higher stress situations, I feel like time just goes so fast. Yeah, these these spots are definitely a lot more interesting. You got the adrenaline flowing. You know, it's you're put, you're involved in a lot of close decisions. We're just playing more pots too because you're three-handed that are just folding so much. Although when Justin you're done, locks it is this one up and most certainly certainly tiring. Justin with the running full house here. Not that he needed it. Wow. Eric called with the Eric board. Eric Hall is playing the board. Very, very quick call by Eric That's playing the board. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about calling with the board there. Well, Justin didn't bet the flop. Didn't bet the turn. It's hard for him to have a jack. Hard for him to have a queen. I see where I can. with calling with the board is that your upside is so limited. You're calling to win half the pot. I, I, I agree. I do see where Eric's coming from. I, I don't think that I would have made the call, but I, I do see where he's coming from. Yeah, fair. So, uh, the new chip stacks. Justin and Zach pretty much tied, but they're on 60 big blinds. Eric, back up to 30 big blinds. He is on an upswing. What is the uh, largest tournament score both of you guys have had? Uh, Mine's pretty small, actually. About 100k of live and online. Mine is... I don't know the exact number. About 450k or so. What uh, event was that? Uh, World Series uh, 2500 bracelet that I won. How about yourself, nice. Kane? That would be second in the Borgata uh, Borgata Poker Open, the September one in 2015. What was that for? That was 500. Oh, you got me clipped. Got you by a little Very nice. bit. That was actually uh, Zach took second in that event the following year. And he took second in 2016 to Jesse Sylvia, yeah. Uh, were you in the booth for that? I was in the booth for that. You that were too, with, I think, that was right? With, uh, was that with Farid? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 That was a very interesting final table. It was indeed. Do you think that, that that went through Zach's head starting this final table? Like, since he was there and got to watch Fareed lose the, the exact same chip lead. That, I think they both came in with about 50% of the chips in play. Yeah. And it just t totally c it fell apart for Fareed so quickly. Do you think that mentally, do you think that maybe prevented him from playing aggressive at the start of this final table? I'm sure. I'm sure. It, it, yeah. He in the back of his it. head. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of pressure when you come with the big stack, you know, because if, if you do wind up uh, busting quickly, it just feels like the huge failure. Whereas if you come in with a short or medium stack, you know, you're, you've accepted that anything can happen. Yeah, I think it's funny watching players. I very frequently will see a player who has a big stack and then lose a pot and still be completely fine. Middle, you know, even above average still, still in good contention, just mentally start slipping. Ah, oh, I had all those chips. Where'd they go? And they start playing much worse because of it. 
Well, a mistake a lot of players make is I think that they uh, believe that they somehow need to compete with uh, what the average chip stack is or somehow force action in order to uh, get to an average chip stack or no longer be short stacked or increase their chip stack rather than just uh, kind of, uh, you know, making the best possible decision in every point in time. Absolutely. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, poker's not a game where you want to be forcing things. Especially in live tournaments. You see that in a whole lot of different uh, shapes and sizes. Not only in terms of forcing things uh, for the upside, but also forcing things to limit your downside, forcing passive actions. Uh, when you get to the end of a day and a lot of players just want to kind of bag and make it to the next day for no logical reason, whereas they'll come into the next day and be ready to splash around. To me, it's always been the opposite. I, I guess I... I would prefer to, to bust the day before and not need to wake up and change my schedule and change my life around to come back. That's certainly the more logical position. So Zach with a flush draw here, Justin with a backdoor flush draw, both players with king high. So Zach raised blind versus blind here. Is, is that what happens? I think, um, yeah, I think Zach had raised. So Justin, like uh, to me. yeah, Justin lays down there, and we've seen Justin lay down a couple of hands that have been decent float candidates. Earlier we saw him lay down the Jack Nine of Spades uh, on the uh, what was it, the Queen Seven Four One Spade board. Yeah, it was something. It was queen seven five with one spade, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that one was closer. This one, I think, is just like a pretty clear float with, for that size with position. But it turns out he was way behind, so he, he got away cheap. Good question on Twitter on. Uh YouTube here from from a Josh V. He says, "What's the significance of the number of big blinds? Like, why does it matter? You know, we keep referencing someone has 20 big blinds, someone has 30 big blinds. How would you tackle well, that one, uh, Brian? With shorter stacks, you're just way more likely to get all the money in pre-flop or on the flop. So you why is why is there on the side of having hands with like a lot of high card value, a lot of raw value? You don't want to play a lot of speculative hands with shorter stacks. So why with deeper stacks? The op kind of true." Why are you trying to get your money in a lot, like pre-flop and on the flop on shorter stacks? Well, you just don't have that many chips relative to how much is in the middle of the pot to start the hand. Like the, winning the blinds and antis is just so much more valuable when you're shorter stack that the hands are going to get resolved pre-flop and on the flop a lot more often because there's going to be people, you know, raising and going all in the flop a lot more. So with shorter stacks, the strategies are very different than they are with shorter stacks just because of the uh, number of options you have and like how quickly the stacks are going to get all in. Yeah, you can see there's already 2.7 million of some in the pot here. If someone only has, you know, five or six million, you want to pick that 2.7 up. It represents a lot. Whereas if someone has 20 million, eh, they don't care as much about that 2.7. They'd rather try to, you know, maybe see some flops and, uh, you know, make value in other ways. We see Justin selecting a six offsuit as his three bet That's out of the small blind again. This time that it works one, for him. Yeah. That was this time hand. it works. The first time it did not work out so well. Zach with a fairly weak hand. Uh, if he knew Justin was three betting that light, it would be a pretty easy defend for him, but he doesn't. I mean, Justin hasn't really been that out of line. Justin with a nice hand here, three-handed ace, eight of clubs on the button. Justin's going to raise it up, 600K. Eric folds. 100K. Zach folds. Zach will Justin pick.
the people following on YouTube and Facebook, go ahead and type in who you think is going to win this event. If you had to pick one of these three players to, to win the event, who would it be? Let us know your thoughts. Well, I can tell you right now, I've been keeping my eye on this YouTube chat. We've got a, a lot of variation here. I'm seeing a little bit of people rooting for everybody. Is that going to call here, blind versus blind? And we'll see if Justin raises the queen 10. It looks like he is thinking about it. He opts against it. These guys content to play pretty small pots against one another, not really trying to press small edges. No help for anybody here. Zach does have some back doors with his 8 7 hearts. He's in a lead, and we should see Justin call here, but he has been folding a lot of these spots. 300,000, a pretty big sizing to use on this board. Yeah, do you think this is a mandatory call by Justin here? Um, I mean, it certainly is against smaller sizing. I mean, you can't. You can yeah, I mean, I, I think you're supposed to pull here. It's, just, it's so easy to overfold this spot. You have like pretty good backdoors, as far as like the straight draws go, and you, you have two decent overcards to the five. So yeah, I, I do think you have to call here, or else you just risk getting run over by your opponent's climbers. Based on the turn, a card that Zach might be tempted to bluff. Justin picks up a gut shot. One of the uh, I think issues here is that Zach has not been stabbing an incredible amount. So I think that that makes it a little more difficult to continue with some of these like weak queen highs that would be very easy continues against people that were, you know, kind of stabbing a lot and, you know, looking to take a lot of pots down. So Zach betting twice here is not actually very credible for an ace. I don't think an ace would bet twice here. Yeah, I agree. So he's sort that. of polarizing himself more to like a bluff or a jack. And the reason why Zach is betting here is he would expect... Justin to have raised a lot of his aces pre-flop. Right. But if I'm Justin, I kind of want to call here. It just doesn't seem that credible that Zach would bet twice with an ace. Sure. And Justin is beating Zach's bluffs. It does look like Justin's going to make the call, so we'll see what happens on the river. I think if Zach actually had an ace, he would probably check turn and maybe bet river. river Ooh, another ace. Another ace. So Justin's hand's actually pretty good. He's beating all the bluffs. He's beating all the 5x. Um, he's only losing to King High, Ace X, and Jack X. And we'll see if Zach follows through with the bluff here or if he's intent to give it up on this run out. Doesn't look like he's uh, planning on giving it up. 1.2 million, so he bets half the size of the pot. Now, Justin, with just a bluff catcher, two pair and Queen High here. Yeah, he's beating the clubs. He's beating 5x. Um, Zach's probably not value betting king x, so basically he has to decide how often Zach has a jack or an ace. He's probably going to value bet both a jack and an ace versus how often he has bluffs. Tough spot. Confirm tough spot for sure. I mean, how often is Zach really three barreling here with a bluff? Haven't seen him do it once yet. This is the first yeah, time. Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised. Like, he, he should have some club combos here. Um, but I, I would be very surprised to see him show up with this hand if I were Justin. Wow, Justin makes the call. Justin Justin makes the call. call. Oh, nice call. Nice call. Tremendous call with only queen high. Fantastic call by Justin Zaki. Very nice call. I think the key to that hand is just, like, Zach betting the turn. Really not all that credible. He's basically repping a jack, and he certainly could have a jack, but it's just not that likely. So Justin making a really nice call down there with queen high. And so that's, he will, that's uh, a, get rewarded with massive chip lead. It's a perfect example of when the absolute value of your hand um, is less important than the relative value of your hand based on the way that the hand was played. Yeah, yeah certainly. Even though he only has queen high, and queen high is usually so weak in so many scenarios, on a double paired board like that, it's pretty good. So many times he's going to have hands like, you know, a five with like an eight or nine kicker that are just left with to be nine high on that river, too. Yeah, I do think Zach has to bluff with that once he reaches the river with it. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to want to check down eight high on that river. 
But uh, yeah, turn turn spots a little bit interesting for sure. And Justin moves into a big lead now, 10-8 suited in the small blind. Now we haven't seen him raise a small blind at all. We've seen him take on a limping strategy. See if that continues. I think that's been mostly correct so far. The stacks have changed a little bit, so he might switch it up now. Justin makes the call. Now he goes for a limp. And Eric, with him slightly better hand, can throw in a raise. And I assume we'll see Justin call this. Yeah, we did see him call the Jack-9 offsuit, so I imagine we'll see him call this. He does. These guys are sure acting casual for such a big uh, big event. Just flicking the chip in. Well, just, again, there's not a single player here that's never been on this type of stage before. All these players... No, for sure. I just, I just think he kind of gave away that he was, like, tilted to have to call the way he called. But... So both players flopping pretty well here. Justin with second pair, Eric with a straight draw. 250 from Eric seems like a pretty trivial call here with an eight. Yeah, very, very uh, small size from Eric here with his up and down straight draw. Yeah, we've seen that from him a lot. A lot of these like really small bets. Justin makes the call. The turn is. The three of hearts. Action on Justin. No help for either player. Justin is still ahead. Now we'll see if Eric starts betting bigger. It does get a little bit tougher for Justin to keep calling on the turn here. Eric bets 700,000. 700,000 from Eric. Eric's line is pretty consistent with an ace here. Justin also blocks this hand. He blocks 10-9. But the sizing is fairly small, so we'll see what he decides to do. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that Justin would continue here with his pair of eights. Facing about a third pot size bet on the turn. He does indeed opt to continue. Now we'll see if Eric follows through on the river. An ace, that's a good river for Justin. May convince Eric to shut down now. Yeah, it looks like Eric is reaching for chips. I mean, this is probably the weakest hand he's going to reach the river with, so I guess he might as well bluff with it. Eric checks. Wow, oh, he, does check. he makes the Justin's check. Gonna Justin's going to win with the eight. Justin, the table sheriff, wins back-to-back -back pots, eight catching his opponent's eight. bluffing. Yeah, Justin, we've seen Justin folding a lot of marginal hands the whole final table, and now he's starting to get a little bit more stubborn with them, and it's working out really well for him. His opponents perhaps thinking they could uh, run him over a bit, but he just caught two bluffs in a row, and now he is even bigger leader than he was before. Rightfully so, three-handed. You gotta, you know, as we mentioned earlier, you gotta be gotta be a little stickier. Oh, certainly, certainly. Yeah, it's, it's just so hard to make a good hand in Hold'em that if, if you're folding too much in spots where everyone's gonna have a lot of marginal hands all the time, uh, you're just gonna wind up getting run over. So it, it's very important to be calling down a little bit more stubbornly. can for Justin. Jack Queen for Eric in the small blind. He does not look happy. He has 19 big blinds here. What are you guys doing in this spot? I think versus someone who's been Tough raising. Spot America, for sure. Someone who's been raising actively. I think it's a pretty easy shove. I'm not sure we'll see it. I'm pretty surprised to see Eric just wow. fold there. I, I don't know about that one. He gets away from it. Um, Justin hasn't been that active. Wait, honest. was he the big blind? No, he was he the was small, small blind. blind. Okay. So Eric was a small blind. 
Yeah, that, that would be a ludicrous fold out of the big blind. And the small blind, I think it's actually pretty reasonable against 2.4x, against Justin's, like, pretty tight ranges. I don't think it's unreasonable to fold that. I think I would have absolutely been all in there. It's been a rough hour for Eric. Losing most of his chips.